So now that I've had a little bit more time with the GH6, I wanted to share this quick little anamorphic reel of footage that I shot with it because I think it really demonstrates what the GH6 is great at. You see, one of the reasons I've always kept a GH5 in my kit is that if I need a B-roll camera or a very specific camera that I just need to grab something quick with, I pretty much always grab the GH5, be it the IBIS, be it the fact that I can throw any lens on it, all these sort of like hyper niche use case scenarios that I don't really want to tie up a full frame camera for, I've always gone to micro four thirds. And much like I said in my first impressions video, all you're doing is taking a GH5 and making it even better. So this camera does slap. If you are a micro four thirds shooter and you have no intention of switching to full frame or even APS-C, yeah, go grab the GH6, especially if you feel like your GH5 is being stretched thin, which I can have a hard time believing because that camera is just so damn good. But if you're like, you know what, the GH5 just isn't enough for me. I really want some higher frame rates. I want some more resolution out of this thing. Yeah, go with the GH6. But where it kind of falls apart for me personally speaking is if this was my only camera, I would feel like it's lacking a little bit. I, it could just be that I'm just so ingrained into full frame land now and I really rely on autofocus as well that I could just see myself being really frustrated with the GH6 as my only shooter. But if it was a B camera or even a C camera, honestly, any production company would benefit greatly from having a GH6 in the arsenal. The fact that it just does all these frame rates, the fact that you can do anamorphic affordably, the IBIS is absolutely stellar. This is like the perfect run and gun, go-to B, C cam, B roll cam that has ever existed, truly. All the bells and whistles of this camera just make it a breeze to use. The screen is absolutely stellar on it. The fact that it has a full-size HDMI port, the fact that they're bringing SSD recording to that USB-C port too. All of these things within this camera, I mean, you don't really have to rig too much out of it. You don't have to add a whole bunch of stuff. Pretty much everything that you'd ever want to record, records internally. This is the grab and go camera. This is the camera you just pick up for a documentary. You pick it up for a quick corporate shoot. You pick it up because you want to shoot some anamorphic. That is where this camera absolutely shines. Now, before we go any further, I'm just gonna throw it over to today's sponsor, which is Magic Spoon. I grew up in the 90s, which was absolutely the height of the cereal craze, and I ate it all the time. But it wasn't until I grew up that I realized just how full of sugar and junk most store-bought cereal is, which is why I love Magic Spoon. It's the cereal flavor and look you love without all the junk and sugar. A serving of Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four net grams of carbs, and it's only 140 calories. Sound too good to be true? Trust me, it's the real deal. I eat this stuff dry like a snack or old school like I'm 10 years old again on a Saturday morning. Oh, and it gets better. Magic Spoon is keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, and soy free. So click the link in the description to grab a variety pack and try it today. Use the promo code Tomaso at checkout to get $5 off any order, or just go right to magicspoon.com slash Tomaso. Thank you again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. And even at $2,200, you know, that could seem sort of steep, especially when the Lumix S5 exists too. But like I said, if it's really just to be this additional camera in a production company or in your kit, I kind of can swallow that. I, I can understand the price point of this camera because this thing's going to last forever. You know, the GH5 was a five plus year, six year camera. And even to this day, you could pick up a GH5 and have an absolutely stellar time with it. I use the GH5 all the time still for B-roll and all this kind of stuff. So I think if you bought a GH6 now, you're making an investment for the next seven years, eight years, if not longer. The fact that it shoots 5.8K internally, we're almost at that 6K territory of like a red Komodo. And so, I mean, really until the world's like everything has to be 8K, this camera is just gonna last the test of time. So although I am a little bit disappointed overall with the GH6 because we just have so many damn good cameras now that I really wish it just would have like blew the doors off like an A7S 3 or something like that. Give it phased attack. Just do all the stuff that an A7S 3 does for 2200 bucks. And I've been like, finally, you know, Lumix got off their asses and they're really kicking ass with the camera. I think they're really stretching the limits of also Micro Four Thirds when it comes to dynamic range. Like there's a lot of samples of, on the internet comparing this to other full frame cameras and it's just not batting at that same level. It's good, but it's still not as good as like a Lumix S5 even. So look, Everything about it is really awesome and really great, but me personally, it just would not be my main camera. And I'm honestly also in no rush to replace the GH5 just yet, because really for what I do with it, it hasn't really fallen apart yet. But 
in a couple years when you can get a GH6 used, I definitely see myself picking up one of these cameras for sure. As a Pocket 4K user too, I would actually still probably gravitate towards the GH6. The fact that the Pocket 4K just has one of the worst user experiences I've ever had within a camera, be it ergonomics or pretty much anything else with that camera. Yeah, the menu system is nice and whatnot, but everything else about that camera I literally cannot stand. I would definitely go with the GH6. The Pocket 4K definitely has a better sensor and better image quality, but everything the GH6 does more than makes up for any almost indiscernible image quality differences between the Pocket 4K and the GH6. If you're a pixel peeper and you really have an eye for that stuff, you will say the Pocket 4K looks better. And that's totally subjective, which is why I'm not even gonna show side-by-sides, but I think everything else about the GH6 makes it a way, way better camera, even if it is a little bit more expensive. So I used to think maybe the Pocket 4K was the king of micro four thirds, but it looks like Lumix is back, and the GH6 definitely is the go-to Micro Four Thirds camera on the market right now. I'd love to try that new Olympus OM-1. It looks like a really interesting camera. I like the fact that it actually has phase detect autofocus, but haven't had my hands on it. And from what I've seen from it, I don't really love the color coming out of that camera either, but I'd love to try it just out of curiosity. So Olympus, if you're watching my videos, let me know. I'll play with that camera. Uh, anyways, if you have any questions about the Lumix GH6 or anything at all, please let me know in the comments and we'll have a little discussion about it. But otherwise, you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Peace.